too. They were spiritually dead. And so when they turned back unto Yahweh, which they knew to do, they turned back unto the creator, the Abba of this book. They turned back unto Abba and the spirit fell on them. And so they began to worship, meaning that they sacrificed, they brought their offerings unto Yahweh. Six, and when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. See, when they turned, then Yahweh turned for their good. And the people served Yahweh all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of Yahweh that he did for Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Yahweh died, being a hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the borders of his inheritance, Timnath, Timnath there is, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill, the Ash. And also all that generation, this is what I want to focus on, Tim, and also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, listen to this, which knew not Yahweh. That's the problem. Which knew not Yahweh, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. So now you begin to see the problem. After Joshua dies, there arose a generation that, that, that did not know the mind nor the ways of Yahweh. That is going to be a problem. Why is this relevant unto a day? We have a generation. How old are you about? 24? 25. 25. We have a generation, Stephanie, which is around your age, that do not know the Abba of this Bible, and I'm talking about the Old Testament. Have you ever heard, you're 25, have you ever heard the name Yahweh? You never, Stephanie is, I'm live also. Stephanie, you all, is 25 years old. I just asked Young lady, pretty precious little lady. I just asked her, has she ever heard the name Yahweh? And she shook her head no. Now you tell me, and you're the only one in the room, so I had to make you respectful. <laughs> but you got to tell me that this book is not relevant unto today. It's a generation that don't know, and we read it. You read the Bible? All right. Stephanie reads, Sister Stephanie reads the Bible. I don't have one. You don't have one? We don't get one too. But Stephanie reads the Bible. I re We both read the same Bible. We're reading the same thing, but Stephanie don't know, and this is for the sake of the listeners, all right, not for you scholars right now. Stephanie don't know, all right, the God of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. Don't know him by name. Now you tell me that this book is not relevant unto today and you say that this book is just for the time in which it was written. Let's go back to 10, and also all 
that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not Yahweh, not only did not know Yahweh, but did not nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. A whole generation. Yahweh is very, very, and I'm going to stop right here because I don't want to go over an hour. Listen, the air of this body, the source, the power of this Bible is very, very personal. And he always wants to reestablish his nature with his creation. He's very, very passionate about the creation that he has created. And so what I want to say and leave on today, I'm going to do part two of chapter two on next week. But what I want to say today, I'm coming to you prophetically teaching this. Not because it's cute to talk about or it sounds good to talk. I'm not trying to sound good. I'm trying to reveal the sincerity and the passion of how Yahweh is sending an angel, a messenger, to speak unto his creation. And it's very, very important as someone as myself, someone as my husband, to speak unto a generation and to teach them and to tell them about a source of power that they need right now. We need Yahweh right now in this day and this age because if not, we're going to find as long as they did what Yahweh told them to do, Yahweh was there for them. But when they were disobedient, Yahweh was there for them, but in their disobedience, he chastened them because he loved them and the chastening was supposed to return them and have them do a bow face back unto our, our, our Father. So that's why the Holy Spirit is pressing upon me to teach prophetically the book of Judges. Not that again that I may sound as a good preacher or a good pastor. No, we need to hear this. Yahweh is putting out a, a demand. He's putting out something so that we may return unto our, our father. We gotta go stand here. Yeah. Come here, give me a hug. I gotta go back to work. Oh, you gotta go back to work. Okay. I enjoyed your prayer. What? Yes, ma'am. I'm
Okay, you all, I'm going to close out. May Yahweh bless you. May Yahweh keep you. May Yahweh's face shine upon you and be gracious, gracious unto you. I'll be back Friday, 7 o'clock, and then next Tuesday, line and precept, we're going to do part two of Judges, part two. Love you. Bless you. Say love.